okay, I'm live on both Instagram and Facebook. So do you want to know how to cold pitch clients without sounding salesy in your messages? This is a huge fear for a lot of people and I believe it's the fear that keeps people stuck on platforms like Fiverr and Upwork because they're afraid of annoying people or they're afraid of seeming salesy. So it's kind of easier to stick on copywriting, bidding, freelance sites like Fiverr and Upwork because cold pitching just seems too intimidating. So in this video, I'm gonna share the top four elements of a cold pitch that ensure that your messages are not sounding salesy. So for those of you who don't know, I'm Christine. I'm a freelance copywriter in the B2B technology niche. But before I became a full-time freelancer, I was in sales uh, for many, many years. So now I'm teaching freelancers how to use those sales principles to start their freelance business and cold pitch clients and not deal with low paying, uh, low balling websites like Fiverr and Upwork. So. It might be ironic that I'm talking about this because I'm a former salesperson, but I'm also telling you how to not sound salesy in your messages. So first, let's just get clear on what people mean when they say they don't want to sound salesy in, you know, during their cold pitches. So usually that fear is rooted in the fear of rejection, right? So they're afraid that not only are they not going to get a response from their cold pitch but they're actually going to wind up annoying the person that they reached out to and maybe even that you'll say the wrong thing and ruin your chances of even getting a client to begin with so another fear is that they're being too pushy or they're being too bold and that it's not okay to be just directly contacting people. Maybe you've had people directly reach out to you in the past and you found it annoying or obtrusive or wrong or immoral or something. And now you have this thought in your mind that I don't want to be that person. And this is all very normal and we all feel this way, especially when we're sending cold messages. So that brings me to my next point is that cold outreach is all about mindset so if i had to sum up the mindset that you need to actually go forward with this and cold pitch and do what you need to do it's that this is a numbers game and nothing is personal so this is a numbers game meaning that it's a matter of how many people you can send a message to until you get someone to respond. Now, it's a little bit more strategic than that. I'm not saying message everybody under the sun. The cold messaging technique that I teach is about being very strategic and, you know, having a, a message that cuts through the noise. So it's not about being annoying, but at the end of the day, it is a numbers game. And also nothing is personal when it comes to business, okay? So if you're sending a cold pitch and someone's not responding or they never get a response, it's a little bit awkward, but it's nothing personal. So it's a numbers game and you can't take it personal. So if you keep telling yourself that, then you can do what's necessary and pitch clients and succeed in building your freelance copywriting business that way. Now, the number one way to not sound salesy in your message is personalization. So personalization is what distinguishes your message or your email or your LinkedIn message from an automated email, a marketing email, or somebody that's just spray and pray messaging a thousand people. It's personalization that gets people's attention and makes them say, oh, uh, this is a message that requires a response from me. The bottom line is we open messages that are personalized to us. And, you know, this is an analogy that I've always heard in, in copywriting, especially with email copywriting, is that, yes, we're sending emails directly to people's inboxes now, but you still want to imagine people standing over the trash can with a stack of mail. You know, when you pull mail out of your mailbox, what do you do? You start rifling through it and you're throwing away the, the mail that has templated or, um, or, or non-specific address uh, address to on it so when it says like to current resident you know that's not to you right so you throw it in the trash that's the same concept with cold emailing is that we open messages that are personalized to us so here's the issue though 
it takes quite a bit of cold messaging before you get results and before people start answering. So we have to personalize our messages in a scalable, systematic way. We don't want to spend all day researching one client so that we can make our message super specific and personal to them. So we have to do this in a systematic way. And I'm going to show you how right now. <laughs> okay, so number one, you want to address them by their first name. This might seem super obvious, duh, all emails address people by their first name. But my suggestion, and somebody told me this years ago um, when I was in sales, when I was cold emailing to just, you know, book meetings and do product demos and stuff like that, don't start with a fluffy, indirect opener. Really cut to the chase and just say their first name and a comma. So, I get a lot of cold pitches from writers because I hire writers now and they'll say like, hello, greetings, and, and, and my first name, comma. When you're addressing a coworker or somebody you know, you typically wouldn't say like, hi, so-and-so, hello, so-and-so, greetings, so-and-so. If you were you know, sending an email to the person right next to you, you would just call them by their first name and it gives this, I guess, familiarity feeling and it kind of puts you on their level and it cuts out any chance that you are a telemarketer or a marketer or an automated email. So just my suggestion, and try this for yourself and see if it works, I guarantee it will, just their name with a dash or a comma. And always, always, always check if it's spelled right. That's a huge deal as well. Um, I wish it wasn't like this because people need to chill out, but people get really offended when you spell their name wrong. I guess I have too. People call me Christina all the time and it kind of gets under my skin. So actually, I, I guess I can see why people get mad, but don't make that mistake. Double check all of your messages to make sure you spelt their name correctly. So tip number two is after you address them by their first name, immediately state why you're reaching out to them. So again, do not beat around the bush. Do not include openers. Do not include pleasantries. You want to get to the chase as soon, cut to the chase as soon as possible. And the reason I say that is because when I receive cold messages, especially on LinkedIn, it's a lot of like, hey, I stumbled across your profile and it's like, no, you didn't. And why are we acting like we stumbled across people's profiles like on the way to somewhere else? They just like tripped over your profile. No, that's not how it works. So just come straight out and say, I'm reaching out to see if you need help with your content strategy, if you need help with your copywriting strategy, whatever. Just in the first sentence, give them the favor, do them, you know, the, the courtesy to tell them why you're reaching out because look at it from another perspective. A lot of people receive irrelevant, erroneous offers in their inbox. People will message me thinking that I do something that I don't do. They'll message me with services that I'm not looking for. We all get those messages. So by immediately clarifying why we're reaching out to people, it clicks in their brain, oh, you know, I know that I do hire writers and she's reaching out to me because she wants to be hired. So don't be afraid of really jumping in and say, hey, I'm reaching out to you about this writing opportunity. You're actually doing them a favor by being really concise in that way. The third part is stating why you are qualified to write for them. So just to say, hey, I'm reaching out about the opportunity, it's, it's not enough. So saying that you're a copywriter it even isn't compelling enough. So this is where your niche comes in. And I know that this is a hotly debated subject because some people say, oh, you don't need to box yourself in with a copywriting niche. You can do whatever you want. I don't believe that. I don't suggest that. I think this is the number one issue that copywriters have when they try to go full-time freelance is that they are not choosing a niche. They are not niched down enough. So they're looking in all these different directions and clients don't know what to do with their portfolio. Does this apply to me? Does it not? The best thing you can do if you're a copywriting business is choose a specific niche and do not worry that your niche is too specific. Trust me, it's most likely not. It's most likely too broad. So you want to mention that you have worked for clients just like them, that you've helped clients with their exact problems. Sorry, low power. So you could say something like, I write for health and wellness companies um, in, 
you know, and I've written for very well mind and well and good. If you have worked for clients that specifically are related to them, you want to name drop them in that sentence. If you're new, which is extremely common, if you haven't written for anyone yet, you're not going to be able to say that. So you can just say, hey, I write specifically in the health and wellness niche. Here are my samples um, that portray that. So number four is mentioning something personable, uh, sorry, personal about them or their brand. So don't forget this, okay? This is how you wanna end your message. Even if you're sending a really short pitch on LinkedIn, like a, a connection request, which is how I require, uh, how I suggest cold pitching on LinkedIn is to send a connection request with an initial message. And that initial message, initial message is really short, but you don't wanna miss this, okay? Mention something personal, personal about them or their brand. When you end your message this way, it's basically like answering that interview question that you'll get on job interviews where they say, so why do you want to work for us? You ever notice that when you're in a job interview, they'll say that? So so uh, why do you want to work for us? And a lot of people get stumped on that question because let's be honest, most if we were saying what was really in our mind, we'd be like, well, I need a freaking job. I need to pay my bills. But it's because people want to know that you have a specific interest in them. You're not just somebody who's looking for any type of work that a client is going to throw their way. That doesn't make you know people feel special. If you're on a date and someone says like, oh, why do you want to go out with me? And it's like, well, I was just looking for anyone possible to go out with me. You feel like, okay, are you desperate? That's weird. So companies also want to know that you took a specific interest in them for a specific purpose. So what I typically do is give them a compliment on their web copy, their blog, or a recent interview that I saw them in. Try to stick with a compliment. You could really offend somebody if you're like, hey, I saw a typo here. You really need a copywriter. Like, Don't criticize them because you have, I guess it's the saying, you catch more flies with honey than with vinegar. So try to stick with something complimentary. So. You know, you're not going to have time to research every company that you message. That's what I was talking about before with this scalability, this, you know, systematic approach to cold pitching. But what you can do is just call out something specific that really just shows that what you're sending them is not a mass message that you meant to reach out to them. And a lot of times that could just mean, okay, I'm complimenting a blog post they wrote that takes two seconds to look up. So even though your first message to clients will most likely be short and to the point, like you never want to come out with a full pitch in your first message. That's why I like LinkedIn is like you warm them up by sending them a connection request and you only have a few characters to introduce yourself. So you have to be really concise and all the elements that I just reviewed of how to personalize your message, that all can be fit into that connection request, that limit, limited character box. So that these elements are really what make your message very compelling, and it's what makes your message cut through the noise of all the other pitches they may be receiving. So just in review, number one, always address them by their first name address them almost as if you already know them and don't put the extra fluff there. Be very direct about why you're reaching out to avoid confusion and it ensures in their mind that you are reaching out to them for the right, you know, the right purpose, reaching out to them specifically. Um, include your experience and your niche. What makes you a good fit to write for them? Being a writer is not enough. You have to be a specialist and being a specialist simply comes down to your niche. It is super easy to be an expert if you just choose that path, just choosing one path. And you, maybe you're not gonna stick with that niche for the rest of your life, but it's gonna get you results a hell of a lot quicker than being a generalist. Trust me on that. And number four is just show that you did your homework. It only takes a few minutes of your time, but it shows that you reached out to them specifically and this is not just some type of automated message. And that's it, guys. Those are my four keys to personalizing a message so that it doesn't sound salesy. 
And that's the big secret is that personalizing your messages is what makes your messages not sound salesy. So if you want examples of what to say in your outreach, go to paidcopywriter.com and download my free cold pitch templates. It's right in the navigation bar next to the about section or the blog section. You can literally just download that um, for free and, and see this all in action and use those as templates. So it's paidcopywriter.com. The other part of messaging and probably what I'll go through in my next live is the different types of messages you need, right? Because when you're cold pitching, there's going to be a certain message that you send when you first go to connect with somebody. There's going to be a certain message you send to follow up with them. And then there's going to be a second follow up. <laughs> there's going to be different messages for if they posted about a specific writing opportunity versus if they didn't. So you want to have all of these templates on hand and that's another way to systematize all of this and actually that's in that free download as well. If you go to paidcopywriter.com, I actually screenshot messages that have worked for me and messages that have worked to get me to respond to writers when they pitch me and I want to share that with you for free. Good luck on personalizing your cold messages so that they cut through the noise and get responses and don't worry about